And hello, good afternoon, our viewers. Welcome to Sans TV News at 1 p.m. I am your host, Elvis Odiambo, and my sign language interpreter doing the voicing Esther Kendi. Let's focus on our today's news updates. <coughs> Deputy President Rigadi Gashagwa announced on Friday that the government has implemented a series of measures to address the ongoing El Nino rains. He stated that through the National Emergency Response Committee and in collaboration with other partners, the government has taken steps to mitigate the negative impact of the rains. Measures include deploying aircraft for the evacuation of stranded families, active activating multi-agency terms and mobilizing technical and financial resources for a more efficient response. The Deputy President further emphasized the coordination of a co consolidated approach to prevent duplication and ensure comprehensive coverage, including the supply of safe water and address sanitation concerns in rescue centers. Kete. Counties in Asal and non-Asal areas have been adversely affected by the continuing heavy rains. of missing persons, livestock lost and the crops destroyed to the enhanced rains will be making this data public once confirmed. Five, we face the risk of rivers breaking their banks and in this regard we ask our people to be on the lookout. And away from that news, the Kenya Revenue Authority, KRA, is set to re-evaluate re the directive that imposes taxes on travelers arriving at Jomo Kenyatta International Airport in items valued at 500 USD, and that is equivalent to 75,000 Kenyan shillings and above, following the public outcry. The government spokesman, Isaac Mwahura, announced on Friday that the authority is working to revise the threshold to align with international standards of $10,000, that is 1.5 million shillings, million Kenyan shillings, as the current $500 requirement in the requirement which is specific to East Africa region. He, exp he expressed his regret over recent incidences of harassment by KRA Custom Department at JKIA, emphasizing that such actions negatively impact Kenya's tourism appeal. KRA has faced criticism, criticism for its recent initiative to impose taxes on persons and household items of travelers, leading to National Assembly Finance and Planning Committee to summon senior management for clarification. This $500 uh, threshold is an East African customs regulations. And I've engaged uh, Mr. Watanga of KRA. We have had conversations. That law is going to be reviewed because the standard is $10,000. I just came this morning. I didn't see that traffic. Uh, uh, that traffic. But of course, you'll, you'll increasingly see us speaking uh, from the same uh, point of view because we must deliver as one. But for, for those who are harassed for this reason, we really want to give our apologies because if you do so, then you dissuade Kenyans from, uh, you, dis you dissuade tourists from coming to Kenya.
And away from that news update, Azimio leader Raila Odinga has proposed measures for President William Ruto's government to adopt in order to lower the cost of a living. Mr. Raila Odinga emphasized that one year into the new government, it is essential to reset economic policies comprehensively. While acknowledging the challenges, he asserted that no nation is beyond reconstruction and transformation as it primarily hinges on effective leadership. According to him, reducing the cost of living should be a key economic priority. To achieve this goal, he suggested that the government provide essential relief to citizens, including tax reductions and measures to stimulate production. He also proposed a budget cut of approximately 500 billion shillings to allocate resources for these objectives. The Council of Governors meeting in uh, uh, Narok, and the view, the view that is emerging that everywhere people are very angry with what is happening in the country, particularly the cost of living. And some of them from the Kenya Kwanza counties were saying quite loudly that if there was Mandamano now, then the hottest places would be the Kenya Kwanza areas. So as student leaders, what are you doing? We have issues ranging from the cost of living that you should be talking about to issues affecting the lives of students in campus. And on other news updates, minority shareholders of Kenya Power will have the opportunity to elect four directors to represent their interest on the company's board during the upcoming annual general meeting next month. The shareholder recently approved cha changes to the Kenya Kwanzaa Memorandum and articles of association securing four slots on the board while reducing the government's slots to five. This shift allows minority shareholders to vote for their preferred directors independently during the AGM, a departure from all the previous requirements for government buckling for all directors. Kenya Power's annual report for, the, for this year ending June 20, 2022 indicated that in addition to the state 50.09% shareholding, the remaining half is owned by over 31,700 shareholders, including individuals and institutions. So maybe then. It's during the next AGM, which is happening in December, the Class A shareholders will have an opportunity to elect their four directors who will now form the board. So whether they will choose to elect the ones who are currently serving or they will choose to bring new ones will remain to be seen at the next AGM. And on to our final news update, we have Paul McKenzie has been found guilty of possessing and distributing films that were not classified as well as operating a film studio without a valid license. The senior resident magistrate, Olga Analo, ruled that Mackenzie conducted a public exhibition of films on Times Television without the approval of the Kenya Film Classification Board. He was charged with operating in a filming studio and producing films without a valid license and found guilty of possessing and distributing films without classification. The offenses were committed jointly with other, uh, well, others at Good News International Church in Malindi Township on January 11, 2019 and April 11, 2019. Magistrate Nalo stated that the prosecution, led by Senior Prosecution Counsel Joseph Mwangi and Prosecution Counsel Kennedy Kirui, successfully proved the case against Mackenzie beyond reasonable 
doubt. We've come to the end of the news. Thank you for joining us here at Science TV. Please make sure you follow us on all our social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and please subscribe to our YouTube channel. I've been your host, Elvis Odiambo, and my sign language interpreter has been Astakendi and Gideon Maina. Enjoy your lunch and good afternoon.